Welcome to WCI's webinars of ClickView and the visualizations that are available from ClickTech. Today what we're going to be talking about is how to apply basic security, which is a very common question. Security uh, on ClickView can be handled a number of different ways. We're going to show you how to do it locally. And then please check out our future webinars to look how to do it on the server and apply it through NT authentication. So ClickView can either limit the number of objects that can be seen by a user, the number of fields that can be seen by a user, or by even the number of pages that can be seen by a user. To set this up, it's very, very simple. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go into File, and we're going to edit our script. And as you can see here, we have a number of different data here as well. Now, one way to do this is to determine uh, through your database security that you've already done. Uh, as you can see here, our user ID and our password is hard-coded into the document. Instead, if you wanted to do is you wanted to create a variable here and then use that to dynamically build off of some authentication that you already have in place uh, at your database level. You can do that. One of the other things that you can do is actually using the security features that is available within ClickView itself. So what we can do is we can go ahead and go to Insert. We have a number of different options. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do Section Access, and we're going to do Inline. Now, as you can see here, we have a number of different options. We can either use Basic User Access Table, which we would actually use ourselves, or we can use Basic NT Security if you have Windows Authentication, or Active Directory or anything like that, you can do this here as well. And then you can also determine which fields to use. So for example, if you're going to use a number of different things, what to admit, what the user ID and passwords are. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a very simple access restriction table using just user ID and password. And up pops up our access, right? So you can determine different levels of access data. So for example, I want to go ahead and create an admin user, and we're going to call him WCI admin, and we're going to give him a password of 123. And then we're also going to add a simple user, and we're going to call them uh, user Nevada, and we're going to give them Nevada123, so this user will only be able to see Nevada data. And then you can create another user for California and do California123. Now you can either import this data or you can actually type it in depending on what the situation in your office is. And we go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, it automatically adds two things. First off, it adds our section access, which tells the script to read this as access data. And as you can see, it's just simply loading in line. The access used is creating a very simple table for our users. And then it's adding a very important line after that, which is our section application. This is going to determine what our data is being uh, loaded as. This is where our data is being loaded. You can see a connection. Again, the optional security option here, and then a number of different tables. Now, if you wanted to use anything, right? If you wanted to do your security through straight SQL, you could do that here as well. But the beauty of the security system within ClickView is that it's able to do it, most of it automatically so that you can go ahead and leverage the, your current authentication levels and your current groups in Windows AD and other security features to apply those same features to ClickView so that they can only visualize the data that they are responsible for. That concludes our basic security discussion of in ClickView. Please check out our other webinars. Uh, and if, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you very much.